which you guys got another PC build here for you. This is a super budget PC. Uh, it doesn't have a GPU because we're using the 8700G in this particular build. So these are the parts that we're going to be using for the build. I'll go through these with you right now so you can see the parts that I'm using. You can swap this out and choose whatever parts you like. We're going for Corsair 32 gigabytes of DDR5 Vengeance memory. That's 6000 megahertz speed for that memory. We're also going for a Corsair power supply here. This is the Corsair TX550M. I had this laying around, so I'm going to be using that in this build as well. We're also going for this CH370WH deep cool micro ATX uh, case. We also got some fans here. These are just the uh, cheap fans that I'm going for here. And we're also going to be using this Gigabyte B650M DS3H uh, motherboard here. Probably the best micro ATX motherboard on the market at that price point. We've also got our uh, CPU or APU here. It's a Ryzen 7 8700G. And uh, this is going to be doing our processing power and also our graphics. And it's a very good built-in graphics here. We've also got the cooler here from Decool as well. And we've also got some color cables here. So let's get this out of the box. You can see the dust flying around everywhere on this. It's been sitting on the shelf for ages and uh, I need to use it up and get rid of it. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get the board prepped. Now, this is probably one of the best boards that you can buy at this price point for uh, DDR5 uh, RAM. So if you're looking for a decent uh, micro ATX motherboard, then something like this is going to be right up your street. So let's go ahead and pull the cover down and put the CPU in and basically push the retention lever back, keep that cover safe. Next, we're gonna deal with the M.2. So we're gonna remove this here, and there should be two thermal pads on the bottom there, and it just exposes the two M.2s here. So we're gonna just be putting in this uh, Western Digital Blue uh, budget drive here, pretty cheap drive. It's not the fastest drive. We don't need to worry about things like that for this particular build. Just gonna put the little tiny screw down here, like so, and that's now into place. And all I need to do is remove this little protected sticker here so it uh, exposes the thermal pad to keep the drive nice and cool. Let's go ahead and screw that back down. I've already removed the plastic mounts that are on the board that come with the board when you purchase it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on my mount for my actual all-in-one cooler here from Deep Cool. So we're just gonna put those on, ready. Now we can put in the memory here and again, you can go with uh, 16 gigabytes if you want to, but I'm just going to go with 32 gig here. Pretty cheap nowadays memory, so we're going to go ahead and put those in. I've already put the CPU cable in here. Just going to remove the side panel here to gain access to inside the case, because now we can actually put in our power supply. So I'm just going to put these into the correct ones here. Now, the good thing about uh, these particular power supplies is they're semi-modular which cuts down on cable management and this PC doesn't need anything uh, too complex because it doesn't have a GPU but I will put a GPU cable in there ready just in case uh, whoever has this uh, PC if I ever get around to selling it uh, that they will be able to use it and put a GPU in there if they want to so let's put the four screws in here that's now done and now we can put in the IO shield on the back here and this just pops into place and click it in. And some of the motherboards do have this already built onto the actual motherboard. Now we can offer up the motherboard, very simple, just slot it into position. I've checked the standoffs, make sure they're all in the right locations. And once we get this into location, we can then screw it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this down to the standoffs, very simple process. Now we need to put on our fans for our radiator here. And the orientation of these will determine on whether you want your tubes on the left or on the right. And you would have to uh, rotate these round to the correct position for your particular orientation of your, uh, uh, your radiator tubes here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the right way. And we can then screw these down. Now, if you don't want to use an all-in-one cooler like these, you can always use one of the other air type coolers. On the market there's tons to choose from same for all-in-one coolers there's loads to choose from but the case is from deep cool so i thought i might as well go with an all-in-one cooler from deep cool and no this video is not sponsored by deep cool 
So let's go ahead and remove this plastic part here, which is protecting the compound on the bottom. It's already pre-applied. So we're going to go ahead and put the bracket on now. And because this is AMD, I just need to use the AMD bracket. Just goes into position here, and then you can screw it on. There's four screws, so I just need to do two on this one and then two on the other. And I've already put the mounting screws onto the motherboard, so we can all ready just push this into position and tighten it down now you can go about uh putting on your a all-in-one cord the way you like this is the way i do it i find it easier this way so i've already got it all into position here just going to offer this up to the top of the case and and what i'm going to do now is put the screws in here now i've got a big tripod in front of me which makes it a little bit more awkward but this is pretty straightforward so once i get the screws into position i can then adjust it where I want it and you can see where the tubes are going down on the left hand side you can have them on the left or on the right depending on how you want to set yours up now if you're on a tight budget using the 8700G is pretty decent because it has onboard graphics which are pretty decent for some gaming so you could use this until you get enough money to basically buy yourself a GPU and then just slot the GPU in and you're good to go so it sort of spreads the cost out a little bit if you're on one of those tight budgets I'm going to remove the uh, rear exhaust fan because it is black and it doesn't have any rgb and i've bought some rgb fans so i'm going to go ahead and put this into position and get that sorted so now i need to screw the pump down so i'm going to go ahead and remove that plastic cover i did put it back on while i was working on the radiator we've got some cables here i'll deal with those in a second so we've now got the pump screwed down and it's just four screws that we need to tighten down so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we can do the cable management afterwards so I'm just going to be putting in the fan on the rear and you can see there's quite a few cables starting to build up here now so I'm going to do a bit of cable management here how you go about doing your cable management is entirely up to you I use cable ties and uh, I don't use too many because I think uh, it's just too much some people go to town with these cable ties and literally every inch they're putting cable ties on and it's just too much for me if you have to ever take it apart and work on it it's just hard work so i'm going to go ahead and uh put the free fans in the front again these are pretty cheap and affordable fans and there you go you got yourself a nice budget cheap gaming system that will actually play a lot of games at pretty decent frame rates and uh, i think you agree that that looks pretty tidy and pretty nice for the budget it still needs a little bit more fettling with cables and stuff like that to make it a little bit more smarter. But just for the video, you get a general idea. My camera is actually blowing out the uh, RGB color a little bit, making it a bit too bright because it does look quite uh, nice in real life. But if you're looking for a very affordable way to get a gaming system and you want to pick your parts a little bit more wisely, you can pick some parts that are a little bit more cheaper than the ones I used. For instance, there's cheaper motherboards out there. There is cheaper, uh, you know, RAM that you can purchase. And there's also other things like cheaper cases, depending on which way you want to go about it. Again, if you're looking for something that's more affordable, then you can remove the all-in-one and buy something cheap to put on there to cool the CPU. But this CPU does actually have its own Wraith Stealth cooler with it. If you want to use that, you can do to save 80-odd pounds for the cooler but it just depends on your budget and uh yeah i mean that's basically it so like i said a little bit more tidying with the cables and stuff like that uh but other than that it should be pretty much good to go for most people that are looking for a pc that doesn't really cost vast amounts of money i mean you're looking around about 800 odd pounds for this particular one but if you use maybe a cheaper motherboard or you don't put the cable extensions in and you use a cheaper air cooler, maybe use the air cooler, the Rave Stealth cooler that comes with it, it's going to save you more money. So you can probably get that price down even cheaper. But if you want it looking reasonably nice, then obviously you need to spend a little bit more money on the finer things to make it look a little bit more polished. It's entirely up to you what you do with your build. But again, you don't have to have 32 gigabytes of memory in here. There's, you can go for 16 gigs, but there's 32 gigs in here, which does cost a little bit more money, a hundred odd pounds. So you will need to work out what suits your budget. Now, if you want to see some full benchmarks on this particular build, then let me know in the comments section below. I'll be happy to make a video showing you how this performs. I could do a video showing you some benchmarks, gameplay, 
and things like that if you want to see that. I was going to put it in this video, but probably not a lot of people are going to watch this video anyway. And I didn't want to waste too much time on it. But other than that, let me know in the comment section if you want to see those videos. I'll be happy to make that video for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.